Thank you all for joining us. My name is Kimberly Corrine, and I will be moderating today's session titled Playing to Win at Retail, Why Flexibility and Innovation Matter in Retail Execution. Today's webinar is about how AFS and TRACS are leveraging flexibility and innovation to deliver a new class of capabilities to the retail execution solutions market to optimize in-store processes and create more opportunities to focus on higher value activities. Before we dive in, I'd like to go over a few logistics. All attendees will be in listen-only mode. If you have technical difficulties, please raise your hand or type the issue into the chat box. This bat is located in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. We will be taking as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to type your questions into the chat box during the session. I would like to introduce you to today's presenters. From ASS Technologies, we have Jim Cottle. Jim Cottle is a software industry veteran with nearly 25 years of experience developing, deploying, marketing, and selling solutions for retail, consumer goods, and distribution industries. Over the years, he has worked with some of the biggest names in these industries, including Nordstrom, B&G, and Cisco Foods. From Trax Retail, we have Jason Korig. Jason is the Director of Sales and Business Development in North America. Jason has 17 years of experience in project engineering, engineering management, and manufacturing in the auto industry, as well as category management and retail analytics in fast-moving consumer packaged goods. Jason holds both a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and an MBA from the University of Arkansas, and he is currently located in Northwest Arkansas. Thank you for being with us today, Jason and Jim. Without further ado, I'm going to pass the reins over to you, Jim, so we can get started. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. As, as Kimberly said, this is Jim Cottle, and I'm one of the speakers today. And I, I'm uh, joining you today from sunny Miami, Florida. I hope nobody minds that. Um, along with Jason Korig of Tracks. So over the next 20, 25, 30 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to start by giving you a brief introduction of our two organizations and then from which we'll move on to a quick discussion of what the concept of the perfect store means to a manufacturer and what the inherent challenges are associated with that given the current state of retail execution solution approaches. And then we'll move on to what we think is one of the next big things in retail execution and that is combining a flexible retail execution platform with new innovative technologies to optimize your in-store processes and create more opportunities to focus on higher value activities. All right, so first let's talk a little bit about AFS. And um, at AFS, our focus is providing technology and services solutions to all areas of the CPG value chain. Um, we've been in business for quite a while. In fact, we are celebrating our 30th year as an organization this year with that same singular focus. And this is a significant milestone for us. We're quite proud of that, and I think it's a rarity in the industry. Uh, we have close to 2,000 customers of all sizes managing all or challenging parts of their business with our comprehensive solutions. And these things, as you can see, range from trade promotions management for both retail and food services, order management, ERP, CRM, warehouse management, direct store delivery, and the focus of today's conversation, retail execution, guided analytics, and digital merchandising. Just to touch on the retail execution solution space, we have over 15 years of experience delivering solutions to hundreds of organizations around the globe. You know, these range from really small regional deployments with single sales teams to some of the largest multinational brands that, you've, that you would recognize with hundreds of sales teams, thousands of field reps distributed across many different geographies, regions, languages. And we have a legacy of investment in the retail execution space and will continue to aggressively invest both organically and through acquisition when appropriate to increase our functional depth, global reach, and local expertise. Today our retail execution solutions are deployed in 50 countries covering 25 different languages and used daily by nearly 100,000 active users. So Jason, that's a little bit about uh, AFS. Why don't you tell us about Tracks? Definitely, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm Jason Corey with Trax uh, North America. Trax is a global company headquartered in Singapore uh, with our need facilities located in Tel Aviv, Israel. Tra Trax itself was founded in, in 2010 with the goal of providing leading manufacturers and retail clients with tools to improve the retail execution. Uh, and, and singularly at the core of this is the proprietary image recognition technology. Uh, this is a proven solution that uh, we've had much success with global projects 
Uh, tier one clients, as you see there, Coke, Anheuser Busch, Nestle, to name a few. Uh, with multiple patents pending uh, on the core technology, it has been recognized by Gardner as a game changer in retail execution. So uh, thanks for having us, Jim. You bet. You bet. And if I could get to the next slide, there we go. So thanks, Jason. Uh, now we're going to get to this a little bit later in uh, more detail, but uh, but both Jason and I wanted to give you an idea of where we were headed in this discussion today. So we're going to show you how together AFS and Trax can create new levels of efficiency and address any of the in-store issues highlighted here by combining a flexible retail execution engine from AFS with an embedded innovative image processing KPI or insight engine from Trax. And it's this powerful combination that we really feel offers a new class of capabilities to the retail execution solution market. And that is optimizing in-store processes and maximizing sales rep efficiency while at the same time eliminating the latency and accuracies inherent in traditional solution approaches. We refer to this as real-time actionable insight and, and, and we really think, as, as Jason said, it's one of a handful of new game-changing technologies that promises a step improvement over current approaches. So before we get to the big idea of the day, and I'm going to, if you'll just uh, bear with me a little bit, I'm going to kind of back up and, uh, and, 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 and kind of set the stage by revisiting this concept of what's known as the perfect store. And, and we all understand that the retail store or battlefield has really become increasingly competitive and complex. There's ever-changing market demographics, store formats are changing all the time, and there's this increased focus on the consumer that everybody talks about. These are the same consumers who more and more make their buying decisions based on impulse and reaction to what they see, or actually even worse, what they don't see on the shelf. At the same time, manufacturers continue to spend billions and billions of dollars annually in an attempt to shape and influence this consumer behavior, and that takes the shape of uh, trade promotions and other incentives. But the sad reality is that in the retail store environment, many of the last mile efforts that are needed to really execute against these plans, promotions, and tactics let alone simply keep the shelves stocked with product, are not executed as, a, as envisioned or planned. All right, and as a result, over the last several years, there's been a general consensus across manufacturers, and you know, we, we, we've learned this from our customers, who really want to take responsibility for the optimal presentation of their own products in the store. You know, and they really see this increasingly as a competitive differentiator. So to win this battle at the shelf, you know, what you need is a comprehensive and responsive strategy to to define, capture, analyze, and enforce the store standards. And there's, key, there's two key parts of this strategy. First, you have to make sure that the products are not only physically present in the correct store, which is a challenge unto itself, at the right location, at the right price, that these products are accompanied by the appropriate promotional materials or activities and that they're presented correctly. Sounds easy enough. Second, any perfect store strategy defined by your organization must be designed to enforce this corporate standard and should be measured and enforced by target-driven KPIs. Now, interestingly, manufacturers have found the challenge is not actually defining this perfect store strategy. It's all in the doing. So, right, the devil's in the details or in the execution. So in other words, when there's only a really short window of time available to them in the store, when the rep walks in, how do your reps effectively sell your products while you're asking them to follow your merchandising and audit standards? How do, you, how do you ask them to identify and react to category expansion opportunities, drive incremental sales while they're in the store, where they have to do all these other things? And it gets even more challenging. You know, when you, when you look across multiple segments, you add segment and channel complexity, the harsh reality is that these variables can and really do add very significantly by market, by region, by country. And I'm talking about developed markets versus emerging markets modern trade versus traditional trade, direct versus indirect distribution. So regardless of the segment, the important thing is that you must measure the execution if you're really going to drive incremental improvement. So what do you do, right? It looks like a daunting task. So, um, so we feel at AFS, the first step of any strategy to address this is to leverage a highly flexible retail execution platform that's been built specifically to handle this complexity. It's easily configured to support corporate strategic objectives across all these various dimensions. But you know, how is this different than what's available today? So what we see here on the slide is two traditional so solution approaches that have emerged, and we're talking about the, uh, the Y and the, and the, and the X axes here. Um, 
First, there's the off-the-shelf solutions, and, and these typically offer only modest out-of-the-box functionality, which can usually be quickly installed with functionality tuned to a specific vertical or geography. And you know, while these are appealing, in reality, customization and extensions are very difficult. They typically lack flexibility, and nearly always the, the vendor takes a one-size-fits-all view. So then we have the custom-developed solutions, and um, I'm not naming any names, but we all know who these are. These are characterized by lightweight nuggets of functionality that have to be customized and woven together um, to make an end-to-end -end solution in a lengthy, costly consulting and development engagement. And while it can be said that anything is possible with time and money, the reality in a CPG organization is that you don't have unlimited resources and quickly realize that these solutions are difficult and expensive to support and maintain over the long run. So our approach is what well, we feel our approach is a little bit unique in that it offers deep functionality developed over the years with leading CPG organizations, large and small, and it's been built from the ground up with, with state-of-the-art technology. Uh, it's a cloud-based, device-agnostic, flexible platform that facilitates the rapid configuration and deployment of call tasking activities and gives an organization the ability to make functional operation and even user interface changes without the need for customization or a lengthy professional services engagement. To support the global needs of our customers, we've also woven in a workflow-driven call process to give complete control over the sequencing and the individual actions to be completed throughout the entire visit. Um, the platform also offers unique call planning, task assignment, target setting, guided order taking, action resolution, all be defined and allocated against multiple dimensions, including product, customer, territory, sales teams, effectively you name it. It's also designed out of the box to be integrated, and this is key. And so that this loosely coupled architecture is designed for seamless bi-directional integration with existing host solutions like ERP and CRM. And we recently featured and announced a certified integration with SAP. Now this approach allows rapid process level integration to innovative complementary solutions such as that of our partner today, Trax, for image recognition and digital merchandising, as well as our own market-leading TPM solutions for trade promotions management. All right, so what we see here is a, representation, a representation of the virtual planning, execution, and analysis process that, uh, that we see executed by manufacturers across the board today, at least in some fashion, anyway, to meet their perfect store objectives. And, and the way this works is through the combination of territories, targets, planograms, surveys, promotions, assortments, hierarchy data, et cetera. Tasks are allocated by a headquarters team, creating in-store objectives and performance targets to support these perfect store strategies that we were just talking about. Now, ideally, this is a continuously repeating process. But in practice, what we have found, the reality is that the complete cycle takes time to analyze, it takes a great deal of time to set up, and it takes time to execute. And this can range anywhere from one month to several quarters to even a year in some markets. You know, and then when we get to the store visits themselves, the reps only have that short window of time we spoke about earlier. And with the majority of it today is spent on manual auditing activities or capturing photos to be analyzed by headquarters teams in really a post-mortem kind of fashion. You know, this is not only time consuming and tedious, but the results are often limited in terms of reporting and analytic capabilities. So, this process has been and continues to be widely practiced, and even though it's been, it is worth saying that uh, it's even been improved upon in recent years with more advanced and guided analytics and the integration of POS data to better anticipate score, store conditions before the rep gets into the store. But there remain a lot of inherent inefficiencies and, and gaps, and, and, and quite frankly, it's our position that this is a little bit like sending your rep into the store while looking through the rearview mirror, right? So here's the thing, uh, you know, are we going to simply automate the manual tasks or are we looking to empower your reps? Um, you know, since retail execution solutions first came to market uh, 10, 12 years ago, the focus has been about automating the execution. But it's our feeling that this really misses the point, you know. It's really about the strategy and, and, and what I mean is it's the corporate, the brand, the region, the banner strategy, et cetera and getting these strategies down into the store and making sure that they're being executed. 
you know, the perfect store concept we talked about is really about the manifestation of these strategies into tangible in-store objectives. And the job of the rep is to ensure that these objectives are met, as well as capture data about the objectives through store activities like shelf and planogram audits, distribution checks, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and, you know, <laughs> and if that's not enough, they're also expected to build relationships with store management, sell in new promotions, cut into uh, competitor, uh, competitor facings, gain additional share shelf, et cetera, and volume, et cetera. So here's the problem. How can these objectives possibly be met when the rep walks into the store and there's so much information to process and so little time? You know, can we, can we get to the answer of, you know, how does the planogram compare to the realogram? Do we have the right distribution on the shelf and is, for this store demographic? Is this our premium assortment or our basic assortment? And what's going on there, right? We need, what we really need is the ability to speed up the comparison between what we expect to see in the store and what's actually there and then drive the rep to execute against the highest priority or really the highest value task to correct any situation or take advantage of any opportunity while they're still in that store. Right? That's the holy grail here. So what we need to do is move beyond automating to really empowering the rep with actionable insights. Which brings us to the big idea of the day, right? So together AFS and Trax are bringing a new class of in-store retail execution capabilities to market to deliver on this promise of real-time actionable insights. And the way we're achieving this is by embedding the best-in-class image recognition KPI or insight engine from Trax with our highly configurable, secure, scalable AFS retail execution task engine to help you rapidly understand the store environment, make sense of all its complexity, compare what's expected versus what's actually found, and drive the highest value activities to meet your perfect store objectives, all while the rep is in the store. Sound good? I think it does. Jason, now I've, I've spoken a little bit about AFS solution, this part, the part we play in this powerful story. Can you, can you take a little bit of time and tell us about uh, digital image processing from track and really tracks and what that means in this context? Uh, of course, uh, of course. Um, I can tell you the the question is how does image recognition work, and I'm not talking about the the technical aspects of of processing the image. I'm talking about how does it work in a retail environment and manage all that. I can tell you when I first started, it, it it's more complex than, than most people think. It's not just the facial recognition that uh, that comes to mind. Um, the audience here may may have various degrees of exposure to digital merchandising and image recognition uh, image recognition in retail. But what Trax brings is a higher order process that is defined, uh, as we call it, fine-grained image recognition. Uh, to help you understand how this works in a retail environment, I'm going to talk to you about how it handles both the challenging aspects of the products uh, that we find in retail uh, and fast-moving consumer goods, as well as the environment. Next slide, please, uh, Jim. You bet. All right. And so uh, when we talk about the product, uh, we find that uh, over four years of work on refining the engine, to make tracks of re uh, the expert in retail recognition. You know, by focusing on SKU level, the engine handles those variations that the real world presents, from the products to the people to the environment. Uh, you know, as we see in our example here in the picture, the multiple package variants for a single SKU. Um, everybody's familiar with the with the Coke and the and the polar bear coming out, so you have seasonal packaging to reflective or flexible packaging that you might find on the snack aisle. Uh, it's designed to handle that. Uh, most reps in the store, they're trained to take good pictures. I mean, we talked earlier, Jim talked earlier about, you know, what, what is currently done in the store. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second and how this, uh, this engine can accelerate that. While it automates the process, it de de delivers insights that will help take you further. Uh, but it's, it's designed to handle um, the good pictures, of course, but also those blurry images or poor photo angles. And I can tell you, as a long-time category advisor uh, in the retail industry, and I've been on the receiving end of these photos or even taken some, uh, some myself. So I know they happen, and uh, we've, we've designed an engine that can handle that. So as we move to the next slide, um, I will talk to you about the environment and uh, how we've tackled that, uh, that challenge. You know, whether it's traditional uh, trade or the C-store type uh, shops that are out there to mass market shelving, uh, the engine is designed to handle a variety of point-of-sale situations. 
I can tell you that uh, the AFS solution, uh, retail execution solution with tracks inside will support imaging process for a variety of uh, deployments from coolers to the end caps, whether it's vending machines or any other special product projects or retail outlet needs. Um, so Jim, why don't you walk us through how the two can work together? Yeah, sure, sure. So here's how it works, uh, AFS retail execution with tracks inside. And uh, you know, this is the, uh, what I'm going to do is kind of talk to it from the perspective of the typical rep store visit. So we start out with the, uh, with the rep, uh, he reviews the store history, call plans, objectives, and targets, and he begins the store visit. Instead of simply capturing geocoded photos during an otherwise manual audit check, he is directed to take images of products in scene, or that is, of products in each expected area of the store, shelf, freezer, checkout, in-dial display, gondola, you name it. Right? Next, the captured images are automatically coded by the AFS retail execution solution, synchronized and sent via the AFS cloud to the Trax cloud, where they're rapidly analyzed by the Trax image recognition algorithms against the CPG manufacturer's expected store norms. And it's during this time that the rep continues, then the rep, you know, so while this is happening, the rep continues with pre-planned call visits, at call visit activities, or better yet, with activities of higher value where there wasn't previously any time, any time to compete these or complete these manually. So once this data is analyzed, it's sent back to the rep's mo mobile device in the form of um, uh, insights or KPIs. At that point, AFS retail execution scores these results, determines the and determines the optimal corrective actions in the form of tasks or other activities for the rep to perform, based on predefined response strategies or basically like a rapid response process playbook, if you will. Now the rep then executes the corrective actions as prescribed by AFS RE, where the execution is monitored and recorded. And at the same time, the KPI and response data is made available to management via web reports on the management console. And now this gives complete transparency to the task completion, which further enforces merchandising best practices. All right. So Jason, can you tell us about the KPIs that can be delivered through this track solution? I would love to. <clears throat> I would definitely, most definitely love to. While, <laughs> while, uh, while checking those shells and, and doing that, I mean, I think it's important to point out that you highlighted a very important process. There's going to be some change man management that goes on um, when you get these KPIs back. While they're checking those shelves or end caps or the displays uh, to that SKU store level, you know, you're going to be able to track the distribution of the out-of-stocks. And I think you mentioned earlier, Jim, about how uh, you need, it's important to know what, what was supposed to be going on in the store, and this is how you're going to be able to find those details out very quickly and then getting that visibility to the competitive activity uh, as well. Those can be another set of KPIs you'll be able to get, whether it's distribution of your products or competitive products or brands. For the CPG companies that produce or maintain or have planograms, you know, there'll be a functionality to check those planograms. Uh, we all know uh, there's a, a big push to ensure modular or planogram integrity and shelf set integrity. You know, you can do this just after a reset um, so a couple of use cases are quickly after a reset or a few weeks later or months later to, cont to, to continue to make sure that the products you paid for are in the place they're supposed to be. Uh, these KPIs, as you mentioned, will be available to the rep right then as well as the home office for deeper analysis. And um, the next slide is going to walk us through you know, a use case or a real world example of that process that you described a minute ago, Jim, as you walk through how, uh, how it's embedded. And so what we see here is um, while the KPIs are delivered in the, in the near real time, that it's expedited that process, giving that rep while still in the store the time to focus on additional value add activities. I think you mentioned a few. Yep. You know, the example above here or the, the example shown provides uh, some scale to this advantage. You know, a typical 30-minute audit as we went through and did some, some testing and, uh, and we collected data from some of the clients over the last few years, we found that about two-thirds of a 30-minute audit you know, is uh, spent doing some of this manual portion and capturing these KPIs that they know they have to report back uh, and report back quickly. You know, it takes weeks at times. I think you uh, also highlighted that uh, detail to get that back. You know, you want the distribution. You want the share shelf. But now with the image recognition, you know, that manual portion of the shelf uh, captured capture process is reduced just to the taking pictures. You know, shown here is 46 seconds. What does that do for you? Well, that affords that rep or that merchandiser time to 
reset the shells, work with the store management, and, and focus on those incremental sales opportunities. That's great. And I think, Jason, when you and I were discussing this earlier, you had mentioned that the uh, you know, the bottom line was that each person, uh, it, it, it was the equivalent of 60% more time for them in selling, and uh, it was the equivalent of expanding their sales force by 25%, right, while maintaining the same cost level, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it all you, you definitely get a distinct advantage in giving them uh, that time back uh, to those value-added value added activities. Great, great. So here we come back to our um, our familiar planning, execution, analysis cycle, and you know we talked before the store activities are still pre-planned and deployed to the field for execution based on the strategic priorities and 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 based on post-mortem analysis of store data as before. But now this process is is greatly amplified in its responsiveness, efficiency, and accuracy it, it, with this combination of our solutions that we've described today. Uh, driven by actionable insight to eliminate the latency of postmortem analysis and driving opportunistic and corrective action while the rep is still in the store. Uh, in this model, store conditions are captured, analyzed, scored, and the appropriate response task assigned and the execution transparently monitored to assure best practices are followed. Results are efficiency, accuracy, and the right focus on the highest value activities to increase market share, increase revenue, and identify and correct any discovered performance gaps. All right. So we come back to the slide with which we started our session today. And if you look at these seven areas of impact for this combined solution, and that would be availability, share of shelf, pricing, promotional activations, competitive insights, planogram compliance, and shelf standards. What Jason and I want you to do is we really want you to think about where your organization could benefit. And if these interest you or you'd like to learn more about the impact we could have on them, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so to wrap it up for today, it's our hope that you've discovered how this powerful combination of the AFS and TRAC solutions can help you optimize both the efficiency and effectiveness of your in-store visits to ensure you're executing against your corporate objectives. Jason, do you have any final comments before I hand it back to Kimberly for questions? Uh, other than um, if you see something that makes sense to you uh, out there listening that you need to know more about, want to know more about, you know, come come see us. Yeah. Well, then, on behalf of Jason and I for uh, AFS and Tracks, thank you for your time today. I'm going to pass control back to Kimberly, our moderator, who's been following the questions coming in. Kimberly. Thank you both for sharing all that great information. We do have a few questions. Again, if you do have any questions, please type them in the chat box on the right side of your screen. The first question is, what is digital merchandising, and how does it differ, differ from image processing? Uh, Jason, I'm going to let you take that one. I knew that was going to come up today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's an interesting question. I, the, the short answer is there is none. I think um, I found uh, clients over the last uh, six months to a year have, have really used that interchangeably. And so it all depends on um, how fancy you want to say it. But I think uh, image recognition for use in retail is digital merchandising. All right, thank you. Thank you. Another question is, how accurate is the image recognition, recognition process, and how fast is it? I'm going to defer to Jason on that one as well. I have a feeling I might get a few more. Um, the image, rec image recognition um, it, from a speed standpoint, uh, we say near real time. Uh, real time would be instantaneous. Uh, what we promise to uh, to the clients of AFS is, depending on the uh, on the use case, between four to seven minutes uh, on on return back, and that uh, that's that's very important because when you get that back, that's a key differentiator of uh, what makes Tracks a, a leading provider in this field. And um, and what that does is we've talked about it in the, in the slides that gives you the ability to impact and affect operations in store. From a, from a um, accuracy standpoint, we, we promise 96% out of the box, but I tell you from personal experience, I've seen it be much higher than that. But again, it's a, it's a very strong engine algorithm that, um, that learns over time and only gets better. 
Yeah, and Jason, if I could just add some color to that, I was going to say my experience with your product is that the, it's the heuristics that I find the most interesting, that um, you know, what maybe started as a seven-minute um, turnaround for image recognition has only gotten faster and faster the more that the system has learned based on, based on the products that I've positioned on you know, my shelf. It, it has, and I think I touched on that briefly, not to drag this question out too much longer, but I think those are valuable points. No, I think, but uh, it tends to be the questions that we hear a lot, right? Yeah. And so I'd say the thing is, is that it's, um, it's the key of the, the four years has made a an expert and talking to some of our backroom guys, they'll tell us, you know, we've got a repository of images and, uh, and cycles through this that has made it that much, uh, that much stronger to be an, an out-of-the-box solution. Yeah, thank you. Got a thank couple you. more? Are, are you aware of any other companies offering this kind of joint solution? Uh, you know, I'll start, Jason, and then if you could, you could add your, your, your feeling. I, I, for one, am not in North America. I am not, I can't speak to other regions of the world, but certainly in North America, I don't have any experience. I don't have any any reason to believe something else is out there that's uh, that's doing this today. Yeah, I can tell you in North America, this is the uh, this is our first partnership of this type, and so this is definitely uh, an exciting time to be uh, to be out there and be in the auditing field and to be able to leverage this type of um, this type of partnership. Okay. And another question, what companies are using the image processing today? Hmm. Well, I mean, I highlighted a few of them that are out there. Um, I think I mentioned them, you know, some of them, uh, some of the large ones, uh, Coke, some of our, our earliest clients, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, uh, Nestle is a, is a client that's using it. Uh, I think there's a lot of them out there, but again, those are some of the top-notch ones that uh, we can say Without a doubt, they've seen success with it. Okay. Thank you. That seems to be all the questions we have for right now. Okay. Thank you, thank you for taking your time out of your day to attend this webinar, and thank you, Jim and Jason, for your presentation. You bet. It's our pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Most, most certainly. Thank you.